question has been plaguing my mind for the longest time, and that is, what is a good story? Is it a recounting of true events or something entirely made up? Maybe it's a little bit of both. Does it have to be relatable? Does it have to be funny or heartfelt? What is its goal? Does it have to have a moral or can it exist simply to entertain? It wasn't until I was reviewing some of our old tutorials that it hit me. Stories are whatever we want to make them. All that matters is that we continue to tell them and Motion VFX is here to help. My name is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Today we're talking about M storytelling. Now on to the tutorial. Once you have installed M storytelling via M installer, it can be located in your transitions as well as your effects and your titles. To get a real-time preview of how any of these look, you can simply skim over and you will see that in your canvas. So you can see the M Storytelling comes with many backgrounds, several miscellaneous tools like this arrow, this animated cross, even this cool search bar. Then we have multiple camera movements. We have basic movement. We have a custom. We have a distortion zoom in and a few other movements. And then we have multiple overlay effects. So these are really great to overlay on top of your footage. And then a good bit of typography. So you can see we've got some really cool animated credits. We have many lower thirds, some quotes that are animated in these titles. I really love Title IV. That one is super fun. So why don't we start with some of our backgrounds? We can just grab background number one, and let's just drag this into the beginning of our timeline here. And then you can see that we've just got this cool animation kind of movement. Let's go over into our inspector. Really simple. You can see we've got animation in and out. We have zoom animation, so that shows how much of a zoom is going to be happening over the duration of the clip. We have background colorize. So if you want to change the colors of your background, you do so here. Colorize mix and then a vignette blur and a few other additional parameters beneath. So since we have that background, let's say maybe we want to add some sort of a timeline or something over top. So we can just click and drag this in on top of our background. And then you can see that we have those animating together really, really nice. Up here in our canvas, you can see we have on-screen controls for position, scale, and rotation. Over in our inspector, we have animations in and out. Then we have the slide animation that we can toggle on and off. So if you want that to be sliding throughout the duration, just that little subtle sliding there, you can have that on or off. And then we have the slide animation rate. We have content position here. We have timeline mode, so if you want that to be in the middle, if you wanted that to be at the beginning or at the end, you do so here. So this is really good because if you're in like a three phase storytelling, you can have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Very crucial to storytelling. We have a timeline group position here, so you can see where all of that is. That's all grouped together. So if you wanted to kind of move those around, you can do so there. And then we have all of the text parameters beneath. All right, moving forward. So you can see here, we've got this kind of cool shot. This is from one of our older tutorials. We can use a movement because this was a static shot. So why don't we grab our camera movement here? Uh, we have basic, we've got distortion zoom out, uh, multiple moves, stuff like that. So why don't we just grab the basic movement? We can drag that in on top of our clip. So you can see that we've got some on-screen controls. So that's for our beginning position. And then over here is our ending position. So if we wanted to do kind of a, a tilt and a pan simultaneously, we can do so there. So then you can see that that scale makes a more dramatic movement there. So really cool. All right, really nice. And then we've got some overlay effects here down beneath. So let's check those out. We have an animated texture. We have this kind of dirt texture. So if you're wanting to show something maybe that happened, you know, previously and you just want to kind of 
tell the story of, hey, this happened a while back. We have our film burn, film dirt, uh, film strip, a lot of stuff. I really like this tilt shift look. So why don't we drag that in on top? And then you can see here that with our tilt shift, we do have on screen control. So that's going to move around sort of a light. It's also going to move around our blur and it's going to move our viewfinder there. So let's say that that's kind of where we're wanting to focus that. Just kind of a subtle animation in. Now you can scale that and that is going to be for your brightness and your blur. So you can see down at the bottom how that is affecting not only the brightness, but the blur as well. Over on our inspector, we have all of the different animation in and out. We have the effect, position, radius, proportions, the roundness. We have our blur that we can toggle on and off, or we can make changes to the strength of that if you'd like. Then we have our Gaussian blur strength as well and vignette strength. If you want to toggle that viewfinder on or off, you can. So you can use that as just a pure sort of uh, tilt shift look without that viewfinder if you choose to do so. There are also some different overlay effects. Uh, we can show you one more. So here is this off screen light. So we can just drag this in really quickly and you can see that we can move that around and it's very, again, it's subtle, but it is really, really pretty and it adds a lot of uh, depth to a shot if you want to just kind of have that light off screen. So I'm gonna toggle that on and off just so you can see the difference that that's making. Over in our inspector, we have the radius, opacity, we have our blending mode, we have our light color, and then we have noise that you can toggle on and off as well as just change the amount of noise and the style of noise. So that's really, really cool. I'm going to probably bring my off-screen opacity down a bit, just so it's a little bit more subtle. But there you go. I mean, you can see what a difference that made to these shots from one of our old tutorials, Emery Style 2. I want to go back up to our miscellaneous tools because in our opening intro, we did use the outline right here. So let me just drag that in. Now all of these are going to kind of work similarly, the arrow, the cross, the highlighter. So I'll just show you this one really quickly. So we have our outline and you have multiple on-screen controls here. So you have this global on-screen control for position, scale, and rotation. But then you also have these additional on-screen controls for your ending point your starting point there. And then this one is just kind of gonna be a little bit of a global, but over here in our inspector, you can see that is allocated as 0.2. So there you go. And then it just kind of circles around, boom, there we go, and goes away. Really, really nice. All right, so we can come down. I did wanna show you that you can also stack these. So let's say that we wanted a tilt shift look on this shot. And let's say maybe we do not want the viewfinder on, but we want that to just kind of be focused over here. And then because we have this nice blur going on, maybe we do want uh, like a title or something going on. So why don't we just add that one's nice because it's already kind of allocated to the right side of the frame. On screen controls there. Maybe scale that up, something like that. And that's how quickly you've got something that's animating in. Look at that. Really, really pretty. Then on this title, of course, you've got all of your standard title parameters that have been published. So you can make changes to the text and the font, stuff like that. I'm going to show you one more title because I just love title number four. So I'm going to drag this title in on top of our clip. We have our on-screen controls here as always. So check that out. Just place that quickly. And then over in our inspector, let's say maybe we don't want that top text here. Uh, maybe we don't want our bottom text. So we can just turn that off super quick. We can turn off our little line there. And then let's just make changes right here. So we can just say something along the lines of what is a good story? All right, awesome. So check that out. Now, there's a few ways to do this, but you can go over to your inspector and you've got your marker here and you can just move that marker here 
wherever you want it. So you can do it like that, bring it over, and then come over to your marker width and just bring that over and then boom, now you have what is a good story. So you can do it that way. Or you can also actually just click your text and just move that into position there, however you'd like. And then back over in your title inspector, now all you have to do is go to your marker width and bring that over. So a couple ways to do that, really cool. But either way, they animate in all together and then animate out. So awesome, really nice. I'm gonna hop back into my overlay for one more. Let me show you the LUT presets here. So I'm just gonna bring that LUT preset in over top, drag that down. In our inspector, you can see that we already have um, animations in and out are toggled off by default because typically when you're doing some sort of a color grade or something, that's how you're gonna do that. But then when you go to your drop down arrow for LUTs, you would go down to M storytelling and then you get five LUTs that all have this, uh, this great look to them. So I like cinematic odyssey and then I can change my LUT amount. So maybe I wanna decrease that just a little bit. And then you can see that we've been able to create a really cool look really quickly using the LUT presets. All right, so let me show you the M Storytelling effects really quickly. We have two of these. So with a clip highlighted, we can see how that is going to affect that clip on split screen one and then on split screen two. So I will drag split screen one onto my top clip here. And then you can see that we're revealing the clip beneath. Up in our canvas, we can change the size of that uh, mask if we would like. And then we can also pop in which side we want that to be. Over in our inspector, we have animation type, narrowing or extension. Uh, we have a footage offset mode for custom. So if we wanted to just offset that customly, you know, maybe you don't want to keep it centered. Then we have our orientation for vertical or horizontal. And any additional parameters down here, just like the line, you can change the color of the line, etc. Last thing I want to show you are going to be the M Storytelling transitions. So to apply, obviously, you just click and drag in between any clips. If you would like to get a real time preview again, you just scrub over and you can see how these are going to look and you get eight transitions. So really cool. And each of these transitions are going to have additional published parameters so that you can make any changes to those that you would like. For instance, this one has either animation direction up or down. You have an animation mode for fast or smooth. Then you're going to have transition B movement. So any kind of movement that you want those clips to have, as you can see there. And then you've got your different burn colors, opacity and noise. And that's about it from me. Thank you so much for checking out this tutorial on M Storytelling, which is now available on motionvfx.com. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.